catching drip from my one. Yeah. Looks like you lost another one. See you catching drip from my one. Try to stay as my fault. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Underwater Fly Zone podcast. This is episode six of season two, and today I'm here with the Clever Fools CEO. Say what's up. Yo, what's up, guys? It's Alex. We up in the studio right now, the screen printing shop, where all the magic happens behind the brand. So what do you got for me? I am hyped for this one, guys. This dude makes, what, streetwear brand? And- streetwear. I mean, like, we're like multimedia, I'd say. Like, we do a lot of artwork, but we also make clothes based on uh, past experiences around what we like do and shit, so. Of course, bro. So yeah, we're here in his shop right now. It's pretty dope. We got the vlog dropping. We're making a vlog with this whole thing. It's dropping Thursday. So be ready for that. And shout out to my vlog that dropped last Thursday. If you guys want to check that out, that'd mean a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did watch it. It definitely went hard, but we're going to get into it here today. We're here again with the Clever Fool CEO, and I'm going to talk about how we met, like how I found out about you in the first okay, place. Sick, sick. So if you saw in that vlog, we went up to the the roof of that abandoned building and we showed you the little peep mural and it's where it said clever fools so this past summer in like june july we went up there saw the peep mural and i, I love little peeps so i was like that is dope and then i was with my friend robert the creator shout out to him everybody everybody should know him by now i shout him out nearly every episode but i was with robert the creator and he's like hey bro look it says clever fools right there it was the little clever fools spray paint I was like, that's dope. What is that? And and Robert told me it was a streetwear brand in Kansas City. Uh, he makes clothes and stuff. And I was like, that's tight. So I tagged him on Instagram. He, you commented on my posts. And I was like, no yeah. way. I feel famous. Yeah. <laughs> I, figured, I try to like comment on like everybody's that's like interacting with the brand and shit, you know? Exactly. So I saw that and I was like, that's tight. And then I went to school, kind of not forgot about it, but just it, it was like it was in the past. So I see my homie wearing a Clever Fool's jacket. And I was like, no way. So I was like, dude, how do you know about Clever Fools? And he told me that he actually like worked for you or something, Adam. Uh, like, I mean, he's hopped in on like some Instagram lives and stuff. That those like get really lit and shit. Like, yeah. One hour will fucking like raise up to like five hundred to a thousand bucks. That's forty five minute sesh on IG live. Like I love doing. That I shit. love I love getting on your IG lives. They're always <laughs> very entertaining. But yeah, so he showed me like he was wearing that coat and he told me about you and I was like, bro, I got to get him on the podcast for sure. And so here we are. So. How did, uh, how did you start this whole brand? That's a big question I have for you. How did like you sit down and get this Clever Fools brand started? Okay. So like when I was like 18 years old, like right after I graduated high school, freaking, I had like a falling out with like some of my like closest friends for like the past couple of years and shit. And like, they were like, um, creating brands for themselves, but they were like ripping off, um, coca-cola logos north face logo (laughs) patagonia logos like when you're first starting a brand you kind of just go that way because you have no idea what to freaking do exactly and so i was just like as they were like screen printing with these like cheap little hobby lobby kits and like their freaking um their rooms and shit i was just like you know what i'm about to fucking hop on this shit and like just do it with them and stuff but eventually, like, I just was, like, the last one standing out of it, and it just kept on going. So they all kind of dropped out. You are with your friends making, starting this brand, and they all just kind of No, quit. no, they were never with my brand, but, like, they introduced me, like, printing shirts and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, DIY style. Like, they had no idea what they were doing either, but I just thought it was fucking sick. And I'm, I was, like, 18, and they were, like, 25 to, like, 30. So I was just like, you know what? Like, I'm going to follow what they do, you know? Interesting. So, so how did you get the name Clever Fools and how did you get started with uh, this whole thing? That's so funny because I get that <laughs> question all the time. And I, like, literally, I really don't have an explanation for people because I was literally just sitting in my basement and I just like, my girlfriend was like chilling on the, the bed at this, uh, at the time and freaking, I'm just like, yo, I'm just going to start this brand Clever Fools because I feel like it just kind of like describes me as a person. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people like doubt you as like a fool before like you come up and then you're like clever and everybody exactly. thinks you're like dope as hell and they <clears throat> follow the train and shit. So. Yeah. So I, well, my understanding of it, I was like, I was like, I think it means like you're clever, like you're smart, but people view you as a fool. So I was kind of, kind of right. And yeah. then, then when you blow up, they're like, oh, he was actually smart and we, we were the fools. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, it's all about, like, taking risk and shit. Like, you're a fool. Like, a lot of people would call you a fool for, like, going out there and doing, like, some dumb shit. But, like, sometimes that, like, dumb shit gets, like, the publicity that you need to, like, blow up. And it's kind of what we were talking about before this started and what we talked about in episode two. You know, people like to hate on people going out and chasing their dreams. Yes, but then when yes. they succeed, everybody's trying to be, be there for everybody. So it's like, why not support them from the start? 
Because, like, if they're your friends trying to go do something, it's important to support them from the start. That's the whole whole goal of everything. Yeah. Kind of all, all kind of ties together in a way. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's, like, some people from, like, my high school and shit, like, that would just never talk to me. But, like, now they just buy the merch and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's it just kind of works like that. That's tight. Oh, all right. So, next question I had for you was, you know, how'd you start? But then, why did you start? Like, okay. What was the reason behind starting? for yourself and for the brand and all that type of stuff? Um, I'm always like a hands-on type of dude. So like I had no money when I first started. I'm pretty sure I didn't even have a job at the time. Really? Like I was like flipping spray paint and shit like that I got from like the free store and like selling it to people like homies and stuff for <laughs> nice. like a dollar or two a can and shit. <laughs> like seriously, I, I didn't have a job for like, I would say like almost six months and like, really? dude, I was on some bum shit. I ain't gonna lie. You were just but, spray painting and having fun? Yeah, I was on like just whatever. I was just kind of winging it, you know, because I like w- worked at a grocery store and freaking hated that shit. Yeah. So I started the brand and like we started up like a big cartel online and we were selling t-shirts for like 10 to 12 bucks. But like they were kind of shitty, I ain't gonna lie. Like they were gilding <laughs> t-shirts, bad screen prints on them. But people were buying them like when you're at that price range, it's freaking cheap and shit. Yeah, you know? literally. So like um, we were just started selling hella tees and then um, I got, I was just like, I can't go to a screen printer and um, get like a batch of t-shirts made because yeah. I don't have 600 bucks. Exactly. So I'm like, I'm about to learn this stuff. So I spent like, I feel like for people being like successful and shit, you have to put in like at least a decent hundred hours to like just research some shit. At least. So I freaking was sitting on YouTube all day, (laughs) every day, just looking at screen printing. Like the boringest fucking videos ever. If you look up screen printing on YouTube, you're going to be bored as fuck. Oh, bro. Literally like I I told you before we started too, like when I was deciding what I should do with my life, should I make a podcast? Should I do this, that? One of the <laughs> options was making a t-shirt brand. He like, said, I looked at one video and I said, hell no. No, literally, bro. I looked it up. It was like 30 minutes long. I was two minutes into it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do the podcast. Usually like this old ass guy on there just freaking monotone <laughs> as hell. But low key, there's hella fire knowledge on that shit. So I'm not like downgrading any of that. No, of course. But you really have to have the passion to sit through those videos. I did not have the passion for it. Yeah. So props to you for actually sticking with it. I feel like I realized I had a passion for like screen printing and making garments for myself is like when i got past the wave of like making a screen and actually printing start printing because a lot of people like try to make a screen you're like what's behind us right now yeah and like you have to have like a dark room and like you're probably doing in your bathroom and you're fucking shit up you know yeah and but uh i don't know i just got past that like the hard knowledge of like learning how to do it and then like it just kept on going that is so respectable because a lot of people will start and it'll get tough and they'll just dip so you must have had like a strong reason behind it. We talked about in episode four, what is your why? What was your why for this brand? Like, why did you start the brand? And what is your goal for like your life throughout all of this stuff? Oh, uh, why did I start the brand? Um, Honestly, as like an, uh, I wouldn't say an escape to like what I was doing previously. But like, I feel like going back to like how I was thinking of like I was who I was in high school versus who I am now. I think it ties to like just creating for yourself and like um, don't create anything that you don't want to do or you're not related to or you don't have any past experience with it because you will not love the product. You cannot push it as hard and freaking you're just going to feel shitty at the end of the day. So the brand is just like, I don't know, man, freaking. uh, (laughs) All right, I'm pausing out for a second. (laughs) But freaking the brand is just wrapped around like just creating for yourself. Like fuck what everybody else thinks like, you know. Yeah, I saw a video of you I saw on your, it was like a reel. It was like you were talking, you were at the peep mural. By the way, this dude made that huge little peep mural. He's the guy who made it, so. Yeah, shout out my boy, Sus Boy, and freaking shout out Kyle and everybody that helped me like clean up that shit and painted it with me. Yeah, I mean, it was dope, but you were there and you made a little reel and you were like, anybody who's down to come out and do some cool stuff like this, let's go. And if you're not down, then peace, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going and if you're with it, let's go. If not, you know, I'll see you later. Yeah. I, I loved that about seeing freaking, that. I loved that. Yeah, that's just like a raw clip. I love that moment because it was just like off the like the dumb just freaking saying that but um if you're just not i'm trying to build you know what i'm saying and like as i'm like 24 years old i'm realizing like if you're not trying to build some stuff or like you're really putting in the time into what you're doing i can still respect other crafts as long as you freaking put in the time like real recognizes real it doesn't matter what you do it's just like when you first meet someone you're like oh no you're actually dead serious about this like you're gonna you're gonna keep on pushing even if it fails i still think this is so fucking sick that you're pushing you know yeah, bro. That's what I think about everything. It's like 
why would you try to do something that you don't truly love? Like, it may not blow up to be like Adidas or some huge brand, but it's what you love. And you're going to be able to sit back on your deathbed someday looking back at your life thinking, I'm glad I did what I what I actually wanted to do. I'm glad I do what I truly loved. And then it just conformed to some societal way of living. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. I feel like regret is like super big on my mindset like right now. As like we're going into 2022, there's a few things on my mind where I'm just like, if I don't get myself out there to like better myself at the things that I want to try to get better at, like I I just think I'm going to always be sitting in like this plateau of the brand and shit because the brand, if you're not getting out there meeting people, making these connections, there's literally, you're, you're limiting yourself to your freaking what you can create on yourself. You know, like exactly. I like creating with other people. I do not have the best ideas for my brand, bro. Yeah, It's an ego thing, like low key, like, uh, the art, graffiti, all that kind of shit. Like everybody thinks they can create the best for themselves, but I'm like, fuck that. Like the streetwear industry is like, who can be the biggest brand with the best team? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Literally. Not the best person with the best brand. It's the biggest team, best yeah. team actually. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I love I love what you're doing because it seems like you just bring everybody in. You're not pushing anybody away. Obviously, if they're you're, you're taking in everybody that has good intentions. If they have yeah. bad intentions, you push them away. But if yeah. they have good intentions, they're really with you. You're like, you're bringing them in. You're working with them. I hit you up in the DMs, and here we are. Like, it's it's that easy because you, you saw our intentions, and we were like, let's go do it. Let's make some magic. So I mean, it's like free uh, publicity is like the best publicity. Exactly. Yeah. Damn, I can't even say that word, but fucking uh. <laughs> Yeah, man. I mean, people hit me up on Instagram all the time. It doesn't matter, like videographers photographers skaters like graph people all the time and they're just like they want to they want to make stuff for my brand you know what i'm saying yeah. i'm like that's tight that's cool like i'm down to invite you in and shit i mean so. clever fools definitely has a really cool vibe to it we talked about the name i mean I, it makes you think really like i interpret it the way i did but other people can interpret it their way it's just yeah. really interesting it's kind of like uh, i think my brand the underwater fly zone it kind of has the same feel like you got to have that interesting name to make people really think and get interested in what you're trying to do. Yeah, so. people freaking feel like they're part of the brand as like I bring them in, you know yeah, what I'm literally. saying? They can take a piece of the, I mean, piece of this and like apply it to their lives and stuff like that. But there's a lot of people that message me that actually say like, yo, like I feel like a clever fool for what I'm doing in my own passion, like rapping and stuff. Yeah, literally. Like people don't see the light in my music and shit, but like I'm still pushing like thank you so much. There's a lot of people that are starting brands too that send me that stuff. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's uh, every time I'm in a band and building, I see CFK or see any of that anywhere. I'm like, I was like, by the way, what is CFK? What's the K? Everybody wants to know what the K stands <laughs> for, but uh, it's like, it's just like going back to old school, like graffiti shit. It's just like crew. Crew. You always add like the K. Bro, I low key thought end. it meant kid. Clever fool. Clever fool's kid. I uh, thought that's what it meant, but it is not. Uh, I would shout out something else, but I can't right now. All but right, all right. <laughs> there's a bunch of sayings for CFK. CF, a lot chili, of different sayings. Chili fries crew. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Cool fly kids came from Kansas. Came uh, from Kansas. I like that one. Uh, I don't know. There's a bunch. Fucking, I'm not gonna shout them all out. <laughs> That's tight though. Okay, so I don't feel as bad because in the vlog I said clever fools kid when I saw the CFK and I was like. I know that's probably not right, but screw it. That one sounds a little bit awkward. I that sounds lie. a little awkward. I was like, there's no way that's it. When I said it, I was like, there is no way. But anyways, anyways, get back to what we were talking about. <laughs> so here's here's something I wanted to talk about. When things get tough, when when sales are down, when when you're facing adversity, how are you able to able to overcome the things that you're going through? Because like, um, I'm sure it's not always, you know, dropping thousands of sales and all that. You know, there's always those hard times. For me, I dealt with it in episode four. thought it was going to blow up. It failed. I got like 35 views, which it didn't fail. We talked about last episode. I'm not uh, doing this for the views. I'm doing this for the impact. But like, it's dude. like, dang, I thought that was going to be the one. How do you deal with the adversity? Okay. So like recently we did a couple drops that for like Halloween and like the drop after that where it didn't freaking do as well. It was yeah. a hype. It was a dope ass graphic. It's sick quality, but in streetwear, like dope doesn't like sell itself, you know? Yeah. It's all about the hype and like what's behind the message of your brand. And um, when I'm getting in those ruts and stuff, lately I've been like flashing back to like, why did I start it? What does 18 year old me like want to see out of this brand? What would I wear if I like started the brand when I was 18 again? Just like with the new, new trends of today. I have this saying, old ways, new roads. Like that was a big, that was a big saying for me, like for a couple of years. And I'm just like, take what you used to like really love and just 
find that again go back keep it simple though like stress kills creativity and like that's i've stress. definitely been like killed by that shit multiple times yeah bro i'll be recording sometimes and i'll be overthinking i'll be getting stressed out like this isn't really hitting and then i'm like why am i thinking so much just just talk don't you have those moments where like you know it's it like and then you just have this like burst of like serotonin in you and you're like yeah. fuck like I don't need to do anymore. This is it. Yeah, and like exactly. when when I have that moment about a like a design with like the people that are creating with me and stuff, like it just feels good. And like I don't, I like have to wait for that moment. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Because exactly. if I don't wait for that moment, then freaking nothing's really gonna be popping. But you also want to like always be making moves and shit. You exactly. Know? You don't want to be off the game for a month or two and then you're like falling off. Yeah, bro. You gotta stick with it always, even in the hard times and. I like what you said, falling back to that why. That's literally what we talked about in episode five. You got to always remember your reason for doing it. And, and in your life, like, aside from Clever Fools, what is your goal with your life? Like, is your goal, like, what is it? Mm. We have a train driving by. I'm sorry for the background noise, by the way. Yeah, that loud train always waking me up, 7 a.m. <laughs> uh, what is my goal in my life? Um, I wouldn't say it's to, like, uh technically like blow up i mean that'd be cool and stuff yeah but i think like you don't have to be the biggest brand or like the most known on like instagram to like actually make money from like streetwear yep. and just be happy dude like exactly like, happiness the, is the key the more the bigger it is the more problems the more money the more problems like if you're cool with like making like 50 to 100k a year you know what i'm saying yeah but you love what you do every single day like the daily process i think that's way better than making a million dollars and like hate your life oh of course bro money is such a we make it such a huge deal in our lives but in, in reality happiness is where it's at and, yeah. and money doesn't always bring happiness it, it could i mean you could get money off of winning the lottery or something and then you're chilling get to do everything you want but uh also i think like happiness like goes back to like even if like I'm just down to try new things. I feel like happiness comes from trying new things, like restarting. You have to be okay with restarting the whole freaking process. Like as I go into 2022, I didn't really see like the, the I guess the the goals that were in mind for 2021, even though like they were kind of like talked about through my friends and stuff. Like and people, oh, you're gonna blow up. This is your year. This yeah, is your literally. Year. It wasn't. It was actually one of the worst years for me. <laughs> like not really. It started off really great, but like. I just had to think to myself, like, what do I want to do? How am I going to execute it? And, like, I just got to get better at planning, you know? Yeah, like, and, and I feel like sometimes when people are like, this is your year. I run a wiffle ball league. I didn't talk to you about this. Wiffle ball. Yeah, bro, I have a <laughs> wiffle ball league, and there's this kid that every year, he's like, this is my year. This is the year I'm going to win MVP, win the World Series, all this. And he loses. He's, he never wins, and he deserves it. He's good. Never wins. This year he came into it, and he was like, I'm not saying it's my year. I'm just going to work. That's and, the best, bro. Guess what? Don't he say won. shit till it happens. Yeah, bro. He won the World Series this year. This was the year he won it. The year he went in thinking, I'm just going to work. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it being my year. I'm just going to go get it. And that's how you you got to be. You yeah. know, that's how we all got to be. It exposes yourself. Like, I've exposed myself multiple times like that where I'm like, I'm going to sell 2,000 pieces. Like, on the previous sale, I said that. And I didn't, I didn't, like, I didn't get close. But, yeah, like, <laughs> freaking, I don't know, man. Like, but you want to set those goals, you know? You want to make them known, like, to yourself. Like, write that shit down somewhere in your, like, notes on your hand or something. Like, I have to hit this goal. Of like, course, and repeat it mentally. Like, no, don't don't think maybe I will. Just know it. And yeah. that's, that's something I struggle with sometimes. I talk about if I blow up. It's, it's, it's when I blow up, you know, it's like, it's like, I got to believe that it's going to happen or else there's no, you got to give yourself a chance. There's no chance of it happening if you don't believe it's going to happen. Yeah. Like I hear like when you like think of stuff, like the most like time that you think on something like that's what really kind of manifests in your life. So I don't know. I just try not to dwell anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've had some shit like where I'm not making money, you know? I don't make money until I like drop shit low key. People yeah. think like I make money all the time. <laughs> I don't make that much money. So yeah. don't think it's like that sick, you know, even though you say you don't make that much money, would you say you're happy in your life though? Um, currently in the season, um, I'm finding happiness in like trying to rebrand the yeah. brand because I lost myself to like, um, the process of it. Cause it eats you up inside. Um, because there's a lot of comparison in this world, you know, yeah. freaking comparing yourself to other brands, other people and stuff like that shit will eat you up. Like, that's why people take, like, social media breaks and stuff. Exactly. I don't do that, but I'm just saying, like, I see my brand and see how successful other people are on Instagram, and I'm just like, dang. Like, I feel like I have enough passion for that, but 
really it's just like the work exposes for itself you know exactly. the more work you put in like the more better like the results are gonna be exactly so. and it's the little things in life like that's such a cliche sh- uh, saying but like you said you know you're trying to find happiness and and basically what you're saying is the little things it's not about the end goal you know people think they put all their time all their happiness all their mind into the end like when you succeed the yeah. true happiness comes in the journey and yeah. that's what that's what it's important to always remember like if this podcast blew up tomorrow, you know, that's when the money problems come in. That's when the freaking you go to dinner and you can't even sit down without being noticed. That's, that's when where, those problems come in. You got to enjoy the journey. That's like the pressure of like creating. Like I felt like I was just so pressured to like keep on dropping shit. And like I was dropping it last minute and it just wasn't turning out to be the best. I would like by the time I dropped it, I was already kind of burned out from that even releasing this shit yeah i feel you bro. so i had to like low key like i took a couple steps back like i felt like i was redoing the brand because i was like bro we were moving a couple hundred units per drop and like this last two drops it was just like it wasn't as good yeah i feel you bro but we got the new drop coming up clever fools the hey, end of the year hey, drop. i'm excited for this one because i just feel like there's like a lot more on my heart for like this drop um because i'm trying to take me out of the situation yeah you know like, I, I have a goal. I had a goal. So listen to this. I had a goal to, like, move 2,000 pieces on this next drop. But something hit me in the middle of the night, and I was just like, you know what? This isn't about me. This is about, like, serving other people during, like, this Christmas time. And, um, what like, this is like a season of gift, of gift giving and stuff. So for every 50 pieces that I do sell for this drop, I'm creating one custom, like, care package to somebody less fortunate on the streets this Christmas, like I'm actually handing it out, like taking my van and just loading it up and just passing it around. That is amazing, dude. I might have to pull up and go with you. Dude, it'd be Walk lit, up. low key. I'm like, I'm just going in like downtown and just random areas um, that might actually have like, you know, homeless people so that I can help out. Not so. only buying the merch on this next drop is helping your boy out, but it's helping out the homeless. It's helping feed people, uh, clothe people you know it's yeah. it's helping people become more positive you know living on the streets has got to be hard yeah. but but having someone come up and just free-handedly give you stuff i mean that's the way to go so make sure to go buy the merch that's actually a brief brief uh reveal that's the challenge for the week my challenge of the week is yes, to make sure sir. you buy the merch if you're watching the video make sure to go watch the youtube video because he's displaying some of these right now oh yeah yeah they're ten dollar t-shirts and thirty dollar hoodies and we have like six different like designs that are dropping so lots of variety we've never done like a big sale like this with this much on sale so i'm excited to see what the numbers turn out ten dollar tees six different designs 60 bucks for what six, six tees. tees yeah dude where are you copping six tees for 60 bucks nowhere With, that are actually high quality and cool. yeah exactly this stuff is not no heat transfer vinyl you're getting like some screen printed heavyweight tees like the best stuff and and you're helping people out in the process helping our boy out and helping out the homeless so exactly exactly it's not about me this season it's about who you're helping this season so you've been very selfless that I, i've only followed you for what a few months but in the time I followed you, you're doing this. You've done the little peep drop. Didn't you donate all the money to his mom? Uh, I did not donate the money to his mom. Uh, I had the pretty much the go for that project um, through like messaging her and yeah. stuff. But like we raised over, I think it was forty two hundred dollars. Dang, bro! Donated to the Crisis Text Line and the JD Foundation. Okay, okay. But like it goes back, like thinking about that drop, it went so well because I put so much time and effort you, into that. You really did. I mean, that mural you made was pretty much for the. It was for peep obviously but yeah. it's for the drop too to promote that drop was amazing it yeah was if i didn't amazing. if i didn't do all like that background work dude like i wouldn't see those numbers that i saw to like donate you know what i'm saying exactly that's why it, it's an investment bro like i invested my time and money into these projects before i even dropped this stuff i had this stuff planned out like weeks in my head before and like if i didn't execute on that bro it's just it ain't gonna be that sick you exactly know? dude I'm, I'm so proud of you like honestly that's so amazing to see what you've been doing for others, not just for yourself. That why that you have that we talked about, so strong. And there's no other option but success. I mean, success isn't money. Success isn't selling millions of clothes. I mean, that, that'd be great. But no, success lit, is truly but... like making an impact. And that's what you've done. And that's why I wanted you on this podcast because that's what this podcast is about. And you, you embody that uh, in everything that you do. So I, I love that, bro. Yeah, making an impact and just helping people out like daily, bro. There's so many DMs like that hit me up and they're like, 
bro, I don't know how to start a streetwear brand. And it's a pretty vague question because I, like, there's not a freaking recipe for this, you know? You just gotta, you well, gotta I'll go. I'll try <laughs> to answer you if I have time with like the best knowledge that you can kind of start with, you know? Yeah, of course. I mean, that is amazing. And we're getting kind of long here. I keep these episodes normally below 20 minutes. We're at 25, but it's yeah. been so good. I, I mean, we could just keep going forever. That's is there what she else? said. That's what she said. <laughs> Shout out Foster's mom that's watching this. I know you freaking don't approve of cussing, but I had to do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, mom, I'm sorry. She's probably still listening. We hope. <laughs> 25 minutes now. 25 minutes. Yeah, she, she's still listening. My mom's my mom cleans houses, so what she does is listen to podcasts during the day. So Hey, I would do that too. She's still on it. But anyways, I mean, this is your episode, bro. Is there anything else you want to bring up? Just some freestyle time? Uh, freestyle time? Uh, yeah, so shout out to like anybody that's starting a brand. Um, I think the vision for 2022 is going simple, like super simple. You can make simple dope. A lot of people think simple is kind of boring, but it's only boring if you like actually keep it boring. It's ironic that you say that because my girlfriend is like all in with simple colors, simple designs. Like a lot of girls wear these flashy colors. My girlfriend likes brown, freaking gray, like basic, yeah, simple basic colors. Stuff. Simple is the way. I'm, I yeah. believe it. You can flex. You can flex a one color, two color graphic tees and stuff like that. And I just think... I don't know. With the economy, there's just so many streetwear brands out there, bro. It's so hard to get the attention that you need. So I feel like affordability is like coming into a, a huge um, aspect of streetwear instead uh, yeah. of just being expensive and dope. I hope y'all like the simple colors too, because the season two shirts are, are going to be black, blue, and white. I mean, that's all it is. So they're going to be tight. Sick. I need to work with you. I've been thinking about that. Like when, when this blows up someday, we're going to definitely make a little collab shirts. Maybe even before that, that'd be crazy. That'd be I just sick. don't want to waste your time. Like you make some dope design, and, like 10 people buy it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Honestly, I don't even like do the, like the designs for the brand as much. Like we'll come up with concepts here, but like we work with like three to four like graphic designers that like kill the visions for us. You really? know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we true. have the vision. We know what we want to see from it. But, like, there's other people that create it. It's like building a team. Exactly. So, I guess another thing is, like, team building. No, you're not the shit, but, like, having other people with you is, like, the only way to success. And, like, I'm trying to build a team, like, a solid team for 2022. Exactly. And something I wanted to bring up, I heard you got put in stores. You got put in a store over uh, in Oh, wow. Cali? Okay, so I've been in stores before, but, like, I haven't been in, like, any local stores for yeah. a fat minute. A lot of the like tourist uh, stores around here in Kansas City that sell like Kansas City merch, but uh, I hit up this one store out in uh, Sacramento and freaking they carry like graffiti tees and stuff. So I was just like, hey, check this out, and they were like willing to order 175 pieces from the get go. Oh heck so, yeah! So I mean, like most people do like commission and stuff, or you might get like a 50 piece order, but to start off with 150 pieces, that's pretty sick. That is awesome, dude. I want to definitely see you in like zoomies and stuff like that. I, I don't know if that's your type of store, but no, it, I mean, in there, it is. I mean, like the brand fits in there. I just don't think like I'm ready to get into zoomies unless I have that team. You that's know what I'm you, saying? You'll really be having to do a lot of work when you get in there. Yeah, that's a lot of wholesale stuff, but like you can definitely like play your cards right and blow up through zoomies of course i love what you're doing right now bro i i really want to make that collab shirt like that'd be tight that'd hey, be awesome just hit me up Give i mean me i got 98 sales on season one so you got I, you sold 98 shirts 98 shirts in season one bro i did it through that's freestyle not bad graphics. dude like i think that's sick yeah bro maybe we can make something happen i think the listeners they're either like hell yeah or they're like no <laughs> what to the 98 shirts no they're either like i'm gonna buy that or they're gonna be like i already got my shirt bro i'm not getting that. <laughs> I don't know. That's another thing is like tapping in, putting in the work to like um get into like these different kind of atmospheres with like skateboarding and graffiti and really kind of honing in with other people. Cause like on this ten dollar t shirts, bro, like I had like three designs off of this just from somebody who wanted to collab with us. Really? You know what I'm saying? So it's like a win win. I'm gonna hook them up, not with just merch, but I'm gonna hook them up with some money that way they can get paid off their designs. But yeah. we're pushing out dope shit. And you're supporting others, like support, literally supporting your competition, working together. I love that. Like we have a podcast in Raymore, the Lazy Boys Commentary, and it's like I guess that you could say they're my competition, but like I love those dudes. I talk to them every day. I we're gonna I'm gonna be on their uh, podcast coming up here soon. They're gonna be on mine in season three. Like that's sick. it's all about working together. It's not all about competition. It's about yeah. growing and it's you not, know loving. It's not. It's not. Life is too like simple to not love. You know. 
Okay, all so about. let's get to the end. Are you going to hit me with that challenge? Yeah, bro. Yeah, I already so, know. I had to think about it for a second, well, but I got it. First of all, it. I want to say my challenge just again. You know, buy the dang $10 tees, bro. Buy, buy six of them. Give this man six sales. He's trying to get... 50, you know, 50, like, multiple times. What did you say? You want, like, 40 care packages? Right, so, 40 times 50 is 2,000. So, it's still the 2,000 goal. But, yeah. like, I'm trying to reframe it in my mind to where, like, my goal is to get 40 packages handed out. Not yeah. to hit 2,000. Not to hit two, It's not about the 2,000 sales. It's about the 40 packages. Yeah, it's flipping the script. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's going to be awesome. I definitely want to try to pull up for that. That's going to be a good time. Yeah. And it's making a huge impact, you know? So, yeah. yeah, make sure you go buy the $10 tees. They start. This podcast will drop on Monday, so a week from today. We're recording it on the Monday that episode five dropped. But, yeah, they'll be, drop, they'll be out by now. Like, when you hear this, you can go buy them. So, go over to the Clever Fool's Instagram. Cop yourself one, two, three, twenty. Don't you know? be late, Foster. If you drop it on a Saturday, and I'm not the site, dropping bro. it on a Saturday, bro. Okay. Monday. I'll tell you my little theory before we get into the challenge. You know, Monday is like the low energy day. Everyone wakes up. They're like, "Oh, the whole week of work. This sucks." Today's Monday. Yeah, bro. But it's like Monday is the day you can make a huge opportunity to motivate because people need it on a Monday. So that's why I put out these episodes on Mondays. That's damn. That's pretty sick, it. dude. I try to think deeply about everything I do. So. <clears throat> So, yeah, that's the whole meaning behind that. But what is your challenge for the week? I've been waiting for this. We talked about it like an hour okay, ago. Okay, now you're hyping it up. And now I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm second guessing my challenge. No, don't second guess, bro. Just go for it. <laughs> okay, well, I think like supporting like small time artists. And I'm not like, talking about my clothing brand right now. But like your friends on Facebook who are actually trying to make paintings or like support their music and stuff. Like maybe buying some merch from like your small rapper friends or like buy a small painting from somebody. I think it goes a long way. Literally. To like know that they can keep on, you know, that they can actually make money doing this. I mean, a lot of people sell that stuff where they don't even make money on it. They just need the publicity to keep on going. So, exactly, so bro. support like really like small town people. Yeah, so. like support like a podcast that's dropping the season two shirts, you know? So like, like so just support <laughs> us and everybody like local, you know Literally, what I'm saying? Literally, bro. Support everybody. <laughs> I, I love that challenge. That's kind of the theme of this season is just support and loving people and chasing your dreams. So yeah. that challenge is perfect. You know, our challenges both kind of go together. But, you know, if you have a friend out there and they're trying to put something out, it doesn't hurt to help them. You know, it doesn't hurt to buy at least something from them. So, yeah, yeah. It's Especially the little thing. Christmas and stuff. So, exactly. All right, man. All you right. are officially our first 30 minute episode. So, congratulations. Hey, that's, never mind. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me. It was super sick, dude. Like, I always like telling people and like motivating people on a podcast like this. So, of course. Another time. We'll have to do this in like a year or two. Oh, like, yeah. Recap. Hopefully, I'm still doing it. No, I'm just like, nah, I'll, I'll be doing, doing it. I'll, be, I'll have to fly you out to LA or some shit. Of course, bro. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's already past 30 minutes. I just want to ask, like, what is next? Like, are you just going to stick doing this? Or are you trying to go to LA or what? Um. So, are we, we are putting this in the podcast. Screw it, bro. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, that's like a lot of goals for like streetwear brands. Um. No, Um. my goal is not to move to LA. My goal is to freaking... um just be comfortable like pushing product here in the warehouse um escaping and like exploring new places and like connecting with other people with the brand i think like graffiti like people and like documenting other people painting graffiti i think that's like my goal for 2022 i love that bro stay in <laughs> kc because we got to link up forever bro. yeah i mean honestly having a homes like home like store here down the crossroads would be super sick just um because we don't have like an environment like the Supreme on Fairfax, the hundreds on Fairfax in LA. We need something like that here where it's exactly. just like a constant pull up where it's just, you got dope clothes, people are skating outside and then like, it's just a vibe, you know? I love that, bro. All right. Congratulations. First 30 minute episode. This is also the first guest episode. I actually didn't know the guy going into it. We just met like what, an hour ago? Yeah. Yeah. We knew each other over It was Instagram. pretty chill. Yeah. It was pretty chill. I of liked course. it. But Love all you guys. Thanks for listening. Episode 7 coming next Monday. T-shirt drop should be out by now for season 2. So go cop that. Love you guys. Have a great week. See you later. Peace. Damn. That was tight. That was good. That was tight. Sick, dude. You guys did great. Thank about you so much, bro. Some, yeah. About to buy some shirts. Damn. Are you guys about to head back to town? Like.